This is peak Fox body. 93 SVT Cobra. I love it. What started it all for me? 1966 Shelby GT350H. These were Hertz rental cars originally. This is clearly a number one. They don't get any better than this. To a Ford expert, this jumps out as being not correct. This rear tail panel has been replaced. Wow. So it is continuing to trend even higher than I thought. I think we're going to leave that to the new owner. You're going to sell it? Hey Chris, how are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, 93 SVT Cobra. I love it. What started it all for me. Obviously, you know why you're here. Yes. You've agreed to let me do an appraisal on your car. Absolutely. Look forward to hearing what you have for me. All right, awesome. See Thank you in a little you. bit. I've completed my condition inspection of Chris's 1993 SVT Cobra. I don't know what I can say about it other than it's a brand new car. It has 500 miles on it. It's all original paint. The chassis looks brand new. The interior is brand new. The stickers are still on the windows. The sticker is still on the radio. Again, it's brand new. Anybody could figure that one out. What I need to do is figure out what it's worth and what my appraised value will be. They made just under 5,000 1993 SVT Cobras. Don't mistake the SVT Cobra with the SVT Cobra R. The Cobra R, they made 107 of them. It was a two seat stripped down version of this that was made for SCCA racing. You had to have a competition license to buy one. This is the lesser performance version, if you will, of the same car. It has real Mustang seats, including a back seat. You could get air conditioning, you could get a radio, you could get power windows. In actual use, the SVT Cobra is a much nicer car than the R. Rarity wise, it is not as rare, but that doesn't seem to be hurting them in the marketplace today. They are increasing in price at a rapid rate, and there's a good reason for that. This is peak Fox body. These are the nicest Fox body Mustangs that Ford ever made. They are the most highly developed Fox body car. They ride the nicest, they perform the best, and they were the last of the breed. Using the Haggerty Valuation Tools Condition Guide, this is clearly a number one. It's a 500 mile wrapper car. We talk a lot about wrapper cars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is one. It still has the wrappers on it. It has the stickers on everything, stickers on the hood, on the interior. It basically has not been driven other than some exercise miles since it was sold new. That's it. They don't get any better than this. Before I deliver my final appraised value, I'm gonna give all of you viewers a chance to see the interior of basically a brand new SVT Cobra and we'll fire it up so you can hear it as well. So again, if this were a Cobra R, it would have crank windows, uh, cloth, cop car seats, you know, no radio, no air conditioning. But as an SVT Cobra, this has a really nice, uh, fully turned out interior. And uh, we're gonna start it up and listen to it. Well, there you have it. Nothing to see here, folks. It's a brand new car. It starts up, runs, and sounds like a brand new 1993 SVT Cobra. So it's kind of like stepping back in time and walking into a dealership and convincing them that you could actually afford one and trying it out. I need to crunch some numbers, figure out what I'm going to appraise Chris's car at, get him back in here, and see what his reaction is. Hey, Chris, this was a tough one. I. You really put me to work, you know, doing a condition report on this brand new car. Kidding aside, obviously it doesn't take a genius to figure out this is a wrapper car. It's brand new. The big question is, before I give you my number, what's your number? What do you, you follow these, what do you think it's worth today? I'm guessing a seventy-five dollars to $80,000 car, potentially. I think anybody looking for one would pay seventy-five dollars or $80,000 for it. But I think that today, this car, this condition, 
I think it's 90 grand. Wow. So it is continuing to trend even it's higher than I thought. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. As time goes on, this is peak Fox body, and guys that have a collection, guys that want you know the best, they're gonna want this. And it's one of the easiest ways to feel 18 again. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, yes. Well, I really appreciate you bringing her over. No worries, I appreciate Thank you so time. much. Thank you very much. Yeah, hey, you're welcome. It just brings me back to a, a younger time in my life of, of where I in, enjoyed my, you know, my youth and, and, and now it's just nice to have what I craved for so many years. Hey Chris. Hey Colin. How you doing? Awesome. How are you? Fantastic. I've never seen one of these before. Yeah, no, I know. I figured it would be new to you. <laughs> Tell me about it. What's the deal? So it started as a black and gold car. Hertz car, right? Yes, black okay. and gold Hertz car. It's fun to drive. I mean, yeah. and it gets a lot of looks, so it's a blast. Right. So it's good times. All right, well, you know why you're here. You've foolishly agreed to let a Shelby guy pick apart your Shelby. I'm gonna look over your car, get an idea of what I think it's worth, bring you back out here and see if we're gonna be friends or not. Oh, we'll still be friends, because the value doesn't matter, but I get it. Okay, good. Okay, you know how to open the hood? Uh, I think so. Okay, I think he's so. in it. So I've had a chance to do my condition inspection of Chris's 1966 Shelby GT350H. Now the H stood for Hertz. These were Hertz rental cars originally. Out of the roughly 2400 1966 Shelby GT350s, just about 1,000 of those were Hertz rental cars. Kind of an interesting deal where Hertz contracted with Shelby American to provide these rental cars for their sports car club. These cars rented for $19 a day and 19 cents a mile back in 1960. 66. I've checked over Chris's car. I've looked it over. It's a very nice older restoration of a GT350. However, there are some things I want to point out that do detract from its value. The first and most obvious is this car was originally one of the famous black with gold stripe Hertz cars. The majority of the Hertz cars were painted black with gold stripes. Now this is painted sapphire blue with gold stripes. That was an available Shelby color in 1966, but it is not the color this car was born in. So that hurts the value a little bit because if you want it perfectly correct as it was built when it was new, you'll have to color change it back. Walking around the car and looking at the body itself, there are no glaring issues with it. It's a very nice clean body. The door gaps are good, everything lines up. Again, an older restoration that's held up very nicely. It's obviously seen limited use. I did find one area in the trunk that I want to point out because having original sheet metal on a Shelby Mustang is important just as it is on any other Mustang. So in the trunk, I did notice that this rear tail panel has been replaced. The quarter panels appear original, that's very important. But I can see some welding where they must have been tapped at a stoplight or in a little minor fender bender where this must have been damaged in period and they cut it out and replaced it. Again, not uncommon. There's not a lot of bumper back here. There's not a lot of protection. Not like the cars of today. These aren't five mile an hour bumpers. So if it got popped back here, they would have had to replace this. And on this car, they did. Moving around, we'll go look under the hood and I'll show you a couple of things I noticed under there. Much like the 1965 K-Code convertible we've appraised on this show, the Shelby GT350 is also a K-Code Ford Mustang to start with. That means it's a 271 horsepower, solid lifter, high performance 289 V8. Shelby took it one step further. They added two-wheeler exhaust headers, an aluminum intake, and a special Holley carburetor. What I've noticed on Chris's car, all the usual stuff you would check on a Shelby, obviously check on a Hertz car. I did look underneath. There is the Ford serial number under the Shelby number. So this panel is original, which is very important. That fender apron is also original. What has been changed are some minor things. It's had modern air conditioning added. A bigger radiator has been put in, obviously to keep it cool when you're running the air conditioning. The carburetor has been change as a modern Holley carburetor. That's somewhat unfortunate. An original carburetor is kind of costly. So is the radiator. But again, nothing that can't be undone. Other than that, under the hood, it's very nice. I've checked the original Ford serial number is on the engine block. So it's the original engine and everything else looks really nice and really clean. Again, older restoration, it's held up well. This is a nice representation of a Hertz car.
It does have the proper chrome Magnum 500 wheels that were special to the Hertz car. Obviously, it wouldn't have come with these blue line radial tires. That's an addition by the owner. On the inside of this car, there's a couple other things I want to point out. This simulated wood steering wheel is original. It's a really nice wheel. You can see the air conditioning's been added. It's kind of a Ford looking unit, but again, none of the 1966 GT350s left Shelby with air conditioning. A few things that also point to it being an older restoration. It has a new dash pad. This is an older reproduction dash pad before they got them perfect. To a Ford Mustang expert, this kind of jumps out as being not correct. It's the contours are a little wrong. The texture's a little wrong. It's very hard. You can get a much much better one these days and this could easily be replaced. The seat belts are not the original Shelby seat belts. They're a very close approximation, but again, they're not original and it's these little detail items that add to the value of these cars. None of this stuff is earth shattering, but again, when you're appraising a car or looking to buy a car, you want to make sure you know everything involved so you know if you want to make it perfect what that might cost you. Now here's a biggie. This is a Hertz car. I've looked it up in the Shelby registry. All but about 85 of these cars came with an automatic transmission. This car is one of them. But today it has this extra pedal here and it has this thing here that moves around and goes through four slots plus reverse. It's had a four speed added. A lot of Hertz cars were converted to four speeds in period. People just didn't want an automatic. Not a big deal, but if you're looking at this car from a value perspective again, you want to keep in mind that it has been converted from an automatic to a four speed. To convert it back, you'd have to find a correct Hertz automatic, which you would think would be the same as every other Mustang, but it's not. The Shelby automatics had a little different servo on it, which is a very hard part to find these days and not inexpensive. All right, now that we've covered all of that, let's start up and see how it sounds. It starts right up, it sounds very nice. It obviously has some hot rod mufflers on it. The engine feels pretty nice. It feels nice and smooth. It sounds good. It's responsive. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention is the car has been converted from rear drum brakes to rear disc brakes. This obviously helps with stopping power and it's a good addition, especially in stop and go traffic and when you want to stop quickly, but it is not correct. If you want to convert it back to rear drum brakes, you're gonna to have to buy some Shelby specific drums and backing plates and associated hardware. And again, that's something that should come off of the ultimate value of the car. One of the reasons why I love the cars of Shelby American so much is that they're extremely well documented. The Shelby American Automobile Club has done a magnificent job of not only getting the original paperwork from Ford and Shelby American and saving it, but also creating this registry that shows everywhere the car has been that is known and the history as known of every Shelby American automobile. Chris has brought in a nice little binder that goes with his car showing the serial number of the car. He has copies of the original invoice from Shelby American. He has a Ford serial number verification from the Shelby American Automobile Club and nice history showing the stampings on all the body panels and all that kind of stuff. So clearly somebody has cared enough to go through and keep tabs on all this stuff and make a nice record of it. This adds to the value. And again, the Shelby American registry, when you look up this car by its number, 1926, it gives you the whole history of the car from new, that it was sold new from high performance motors, delivered to Hertz, all the owners all the way through. It even says which year the air conditioning was added and by who. It's a nicely documented, nice, clean, original Hertz car with a couple of warts, but we'll get to that when we talk to Chris. On the Haggerty Valuation Tools condition scale, I would call this car a number four condition car. Why a number four? I mean, it looks so nice, right? I'm gonna deduct from the condition for little things like the little bit of sheet metal work, for the color change and the condition of this older repaint, and the few reproduction parts that kind of detract from the overall car. I think very easily the car could be brought up to a number three, and if somebody really wanted to, they could make the car an even higher condition by just going through and correcting some of the sins of the older restoration and the years of views. So I've inspected Chris's car. I've gone over the paperwork. I've looked it up in the registry. I've listened to it run, poked and prodded and looked around all the nooks and crannies of it. I have a really good idea of what the car is and my appraisal is complete. I know what the car is worth today. Now it's time to go get Chris and bring him in here and tell him what I think and see if he agrees or not. Hey Chris. Well, how bad is it? Oh, it's ugly. It's super ugly. So I've looked over your car, I've done my appraisal. Before I tell you what I think though, you're the owner, I wanna know what you think it's worth. This thing's kinda cool, it's a driver. I know it's not perfect, but it's a good driver, so I think it's insured for 140. 
Okay. Well, I think today is worth more in the range of 150 to 160 thousand dollars. Good. The way I came to that value is these cars have gotten pretty popular again. They're going up in value. They went up around the time you bought it in 2008. They were high. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were really high then. Right. They went higher and then they came down and now. You know, everything's cyclical, it's coming back around, they're going back up again. Today, I think a perfect Hertz car is worth somewhere in the range of 225 or so. I think for, let's say, $50,000 or so, you could paint this car back to black with gold stripes. You could do some little detailing, put the correct automatic back in it, put drum brakes back on it, and make it, as it left Shelby American, crisp and clean. And I think then you really increase the value more than it costs to do the work. I think we're gonna leave that to the new owner. You're gonna sell it? I'd entertain offers. Yeah, of course. Everything's for sale, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, thanks so much for bringing it. Of course. Great car. Absolutely. Always yeah, good specific. seeing you. Thanks again. You bet. No problem. Everybody needs to have a GT350. Everybody needs to have one at some point in their life to drive and have some fun with. I mean, the history of these cars is pretty cool. And I run a vintage race shop, so we take care of a bunch of Shelbys. We take care of a bunch of Corvettes and all kinds of stuff. I just recently raced one, so it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. <laughs>